Hello and welcome to the Farmer's Kitchen. Hello, Mrs. Farmer. Mr. Farmer, how are you? Are you hungry? I'm starving. Would you like to eat? I would. Would you like me to start or you want to start? I want good regular food with like meat first and then we'll have dessert. How's so you that? want the entree? I want the entree, yes. Let's see if I can hook okay. you up. All right, if you look at our bounty, now you know, if you watch our show, you know that we like to bring things from the woods, mm -hmm. from the waters, and bring it in and eat it. Whether we raise it ourselves or we caught it or took it in the field, that's one of my favorite things. It's that time of year. Look, Mrs. Farmer, at I these love those. beauties. Those are pretty, aren't they? These are morels, real, true morels. Now look love them. how symmetrical they are. Mm -hmm. Look at the design. And look, I'm gonna cut one right in half here. Now we haven't cleaned these up, but if you go to cut a true morel, in half, look what you see. This is the perfect illustration. See how the stem mm -hmm. is continuous all the way through the top? If this was a false morel, what would you see, Mr. Farmer? It wouldn't be hollow like that, right? You would see a stem that is completely full of cottony fiber. Mm -hmm. This is a perfect illustration of what a true morel looks like. It's clean too, isn't it? Smell that. It's really clean. It is super clean. Now, I don't know if Rick rinsed these out or not. They look good. You want to look for bugs. Mm -hmm. You want to look for dirt. Right. These grow on the ground in the dirt. We had somebody on our show one time. We had some celery sitting there that had a little bit of dirt on it. And they mm -hmm. said, oh my, that celery has got dirt on it. I'm like, mm, it grew in dirt. That's right. And I would rather eat the dirt on the celery. Well, we cleaned it off half yes. time. But I would rather eat the dirt on the celery than some of the chemicals that you get from things nowadays. Right, right. So look at these beauties. Now, some people call these dry land fish. Oh, perfect. Look, look at, at that's that. perfect. I think he rinsed them out. So, our buddy Rick Hill, who is an extraordinary artist. Yes, he is. And a friend. Mm -hmm. And he is one of the most amazing naturalists I have ever been around. I love to go to the woods with him. Mm -hmm. when, when I was a kid, when I first started working at Fish and Wildlife, him and I worked together. And he would point this tree out or that tree out. And what's, what's the bark on this tree? Farmer, remember mm -hmm. this. And he was one of my mentors. One of your elders? He's not that much older than I'm I am. Teasing. But you know, when I was a kid, I was looking for the old white-headed guy. Now, Rick's not that much older than me, yeah. but he had that knowledge. Mm -hmm. He had that interest. And so he shared that with me, and I'll never forget that. So here we are with our morels. This, if you'll take a look, is fresh wild turkey. Mm -hmm. Now, the thing, you know, when, you, when it's a wild turkey, if you see like a little piece of feather right there, you might want to look just a little bit because he's been shot. That's right. He's been hunted. What could be better than a fresh turkey, fresh from the woods? Mm -hmm. It's been eating bugs, it's been right. eating grass, it's been eating all kinds of natural stuff. This is a fresh piece of turkey. So we were taking stock of what we had in our kitchen today and I said, I've got an idea. Can you make us some of your dough with lard? Mm -hmm. And I said, let's do two things with this. Since we've got the dough out, That's right. your side of the bargain is? It's gonna be with apples. It's a wonderful dessert. Yes, it is. I already ate one. Yes, you did. You ate two. I'm going to make a pot pie. Now, this recipe you could do with chicken. Mm -hmm. You could do without mushrooms. We're going to substitute what you would normally put in. Say you wanted a starch and you want to put potatoes in. I'm going to substitute the potatoes for morels because we have yeah, them. So nice. Now, morels themselves, if you just wanted to take them and really have yourself a good snack, if you wanted these for a side, take them, cut them up. Some people put a little bit of flour on them. You can do that, you can bread them. I like them in butter. That's how I like them. With onions mm -hmm. or a little bit of garlic. Mainly sweet onions. Oh yeah. Just mix them up, turn them up, and you got something good. So what we're gonna do to get this thing started, Mrs. Farmer, is we're gonna bring this turkey breast over here. Now it is a little tougher. And I wanna thank another buddy, Tim Sloan. I haven't had the chance to get out and hunt much. You haven't. Tim Sloan got his bird the other day. He says, hey, you wanna have a breast? Yes. I said, yes, I do. <laughs> so he was gracious enough to give me this. So what I'm gonna do with this breast, before I put it in here, I'm gonna tenderize it just a little bit. I'm gonna use probably half of this. I'd okay. guess this to be about two pounds. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut this in half. Good sharp knife always helps. And wow. again, obviously, if this is a hunted bird, you would wanna look real good for pellets. And you think about a domestic turkey as opposed to a wild turkey. Think about how it lives its life. First of all, He's out foraging. He's eating grass, he's eating buds, he's eating insects, he's eating natural things. So everything in the woods, 
also wants to eat him. Right. Everything from coyotes mm -hmm. to bobcats, eagles, mm -hmm. anything that can get their teeth or talons in a turkey, look, would you not want to eat that? Oh yeah, so he can't relax is what so you're saying. So he can't relax. That's right. They are strong flyers, mm -hmm. strong flyers. You've seen them fly completely across oh, yeah. the interstate. When they get up and go, they can get up and go. Their legs are tough. Mm -hmm. We've taken their legs and another buddy of mine, Billy Bob, used to take them and, and cut those up and make a pate out yeah. of that. Really cook them down right. until you could do something with them. So here's what we're gonna do, Mrs. Farmer. I'm gonna take a piece of plastic and I'm just gonna tenderize that just a little bit. I'm gonna come back and cut that into small bite-sized pieces. Think about the size of a piece of meat that you would want in your pot pie. Right. You wouldn't want it to be no. the size of your it's head. little babies. Now we're starting off with a little onion right here. Got How onion. many recipes have started like this, Ms. Farmer? 160 pounds. All right, let's start also. Ms. Farmer can't stand butter, can you? I hate butter. I'll cut my onion. I'm going to use probably three quarters of this onion. Not the whole thing. I'm going to cut it up in the fingernail size pieces. So we're going to have just about that much. Now, this being a pot pie recipe, if you don't like mushrooms or you don't have the ingredients for this, again, the basics are we've got cream of chicken soup, we've got peas and carrots. I like the frozen ones. Mm -hmm. When it comes to a pot pie, the frozen ones oh, are yeah. just absolutely, there's something about yeah. them. They're absolutely wonderful. I guess that's what I'm used to having my whole life. And it's a lot easier to cut tiny little squares of carrots. Yeah, yeah, that's right. When it comes to pastries or any kind of pie dough or anything like that, Nikki has a simple recipe that she mm -hmm. uses and includes lard. We prefer lard. You don't have to use that if you don't want to. Yes, you do. Okay. <laughs> if you want to do a little research, if you're thinking, oh no, people tell us that we can't eat lard, right. do a little research. Know what you put in your body. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you're going to splurge. Sometimes right. you're going to eat things you just shouldn't eat. And we're right. going to do that. All right, these are getting close. So now, Mrs. Farmer, mm -hmm. what do you think we should do? How about, let's add just a little bit of duck fat in here? I think good idea. Just a little duck fat. And we're gonna set these aside in a minute. But our onions are to the point where they're getting done. I'm gonna take some of these beautiful, wonderful mushrooms, and I'm gonna cut those. I'm gonna eat the stem too. Oh yeah, they're delicious. It's beautiful, wonderful. It is beautiful. I'm gonna pop that in there. And presentation-wise, these are quite beautiful. Now, if you would prefer no mushrooms, again, if you wanted a starch in this, a more classic take on the pot pie would probably be some potatoes. If you did that, I would just boil me some red skins, cut those up into little cubes, yeah. leave the skins on them. So we're gonna go wild turkey and morel pot pie. Are you kidding me? That's amazing. That's out of control. Mm -hmm. I like it. Does that make you happy? It does make me very Let happy. Let me see your happy look. When I'm hungry, I'm always happy when you're cooking. All right. Now, when these start to cook really good, in with those, do you see, with a little bit of duck fat, mm -hmm. you see the kind of, you smell that earthy I do. flavor? That's going to go throughout this whole thing, and that's going to really give you a great taste. It's going to be subtle, but, I mean, when you have your pot pie, it's not going to be like your normal chicken pot pie. I'm excited. I'm ready. Okay, oh, Sammy. Oh, my. That's beautiful. <laughs> Now at this point, I'm gonna start guiding my recipe into the right flavor. I'm gonna put a little poultry seasoning in. All right, let's get a spoon and dip those out. So all those folks who are asking, what can I do with my morels? What can I do with my turkey? Here's one recipe. Duck fat again. Duck fat. Yeah. Now why duck fat? Because it tastes so wonderful. It does. It is. Every little subtle thing that you do to add flavor all those little subtle things that you do on the front end come together in the end for something special. Duck fat is becoming more and more common in any store that we go into. I always look around to see if they have duck fat or beef tallow, and I'm seeing it more and more. It's much more easy to find than it used to be. And again, nothing we're doing here, we're trying to be fancy schmancy right. or hooty tooty we want that taste to just knock us mm -hmm. out when we eat it. I want Miss Farmer to be so impressed that she comes out and plants one right here on my face in front of everybody. I will. 
I'm excited. Ooh, <laughs> is that for the mushrooms? That is. Yeah, the mushrooms are delicious. I'm gonna cook mushrooms more often. And something else I'm gonna do, in lieu of more salt, is I'm gonna take a chicken bouillon cube for flavor. To really bring up that. Oh yeah, good idea. Salt and deep bouillon flavor. Now, when we get to this point, I'm gonna back off the heat a little bit. I'm gonna take some cream of chicken soup. You can buy it or you can make your own. We've got roughly 20 ounces here. So we're gonna let everything start to get acquainted. Now remember, Sorry. we've got our bouillon cube here. We're gonna do that for flavor. I'm gonna use probably half of this because I already have put some salt in there. A little more pepper. Gotta have black pepper. Oh, yeah. Some more poultry seasoning. And you kind of know the more you cook how much you should put into this or that. We're gonna come back with our mushrooms and onions that we cooked earlier. This is smelling so good. Oh, I could, I could wow. eat that right there in a cereal bowl. And then peas and carrots. Yummy. Some peas and carrots. And that's probably about 12 ounces of peas and carrots. Now, does that not look like that looks perfect. the interior yes, perfect. of a pot pie? Isn't that not beautiful? That I'll tell you one beautiful. thing I'm gonna add, and I'm gonna put, I really like, you're gonna think I'm strange, but just a little bit of basil. Basil, I love basil. A little bit of dried basil. Yeah. Some people would put parsley. I find dried parsley, it tastes like cardboard. Basil has a little more flavor. It has a sweet like flavor. It really goes good yeah. with chicken. So we're gonna heat that up just a little bit, but not much. We're well on our way to a wild turkey morel. Oh yeah, hot pie. pie. Now let's smell. Oh, are you kidding me? I could eat that like that. I think he's gonna make a simple dough. That's right. With our lard. A pie dough That's with our right. lard. And you can use this for a lot of things, but this is gonna be used for two things tonight. It is. That's right. Show us how you do it. Okay, and I actually, look at our beautiful lard. I mean, come on. Leaf lard yes. from a pasture-raised pig. Look it up. Got to start with that. And I've let it set out a little so you can see it's a little good. That's how I like it. I've got two-thirds of a cup in here. And give me probably just a couple throws in there. Just like a, a little sugar. Do one more, maybe. Just mm -hmm. a little bit. Yeah, perfect. All right. And i got two cups of flour here. All right. You know how you have fleeting memories when you're a kid and you remember certain little things? I remember my great-grandmother parrot. I remember the smell of her kitchen, precisely. I remember the smell of apples. She always had apples, mm -hmm. and I always remember a faint little smell from the gas stove, and I always smelled matches from when she would light the oh, stove. Yeah. And my first taste of buttermilk, she snuck it in on me. She said, here, Timmy, you want a glass of milk? Yeah, I, and I bet like, you yeah. love that. And I was expecting milk. She laughed and laughed. I didn't think it was funny, I thought it was terrible. You still like buttermilk. I like buttermilk, right. but I don't think I want to drink a big cup full of it. You see how this is kind of thicker? Oh, this is what I like with the mm -hmm. lard. And I'm just kind of working it myself with my hands. Now here's the beauty of this. After we make our two little ramekins full of this, we got some left over. What do we do with it, Ms. Farmer? We freeze it. We and freeze we it. Right. Next time we want some, all she has to do is make her dough and we pop that in and we're good to go. I wish everybody could smell what we've got going on right here. And we are gonna roll these out and to fill these two pie shells. All right. All right. And there it is. There's one. I'm gonna go ahead and tuck it in there. It doesn't have to be perfect because we're gonna seal it. I remember mom taking her time with a fork or whatever it was to make the, to make everything look really pretty. Yeah, beautiful. You I think you did a better job on the one on the right. Yeah, all right. Now she's putting a leg white on there. That's just gonna make that brown up mm -hmm. nice and beautiful. Oh me, oh my. I had a book when I was a kid. And it had a picture on it, but it was a muffin. Mm -hmm. And it was, do you know the Muffin Man? The Muffin Man, the Muffin Man. Do you, do you know where he lived? Drury Lane. He lived on Drury Lane. <laughs> and also we had a buggy that had hot cross buns. You remember that? I do. Back in the 1800s when we That's were kids? That's right. Yeah, when we were born. 
All right, you know what, Ms. Farmer, you look at that. Now, That's, they're pretty. I think, I think it did a little better job on that. Oh, both this was the first one. Beautiful, both of them. But you're gonna have, you might have some bubble up and leak out. But what you wanna do, now you notice I cooked that a little bit here on purpose, because at this point, we could eat that, we could eat this. This is gonna cook it a little bit more, and when that gets nice and brown, you have your bread for the night. Mm -hmm. You have a whole meal oh, yeah. right there. Yes. So let's pop it in, top or bottom? Top. I'm gonna go 375 on that for about 35 to 45 minutes, depending. Yeah. If we start getting nice and brown, we're there. Okay. Let's get this cleaned up, put in the freezer, and then you're gonna make your super duper, duper dessert. Okay. So we're gonna call this, we, we pitched this around, mm -hmm. we're kind of impromptu, Kelly came up with apple bucket. Good idea. <laughs> this is a baby apple bucket. Yes it is. You get all kinds of fun stuff. If you look what we've got here, we've got oatmeal, you've got pecans, you've got brown sugar, you've got raisins, you've got apples, and this is a typical, like your uh, grandmother Grandmother's made, apple, crunch. apple crunch. Right. But we're gonna add a little cinnamon sugar, of course, and some allspice. Mm -hmm just to give it some nice flavor. You could even put a little vanilla in here if you wanted to. That would be good too. But we're gonna take this and we're gonna make us a slurry. That's right. Of wonderment. And cook it up and yum. Cook it up, pour it over the apples. And we're gonna use more of her dough because she already made dough. Right. And you think about it, that's our bread for the night. That's mm -hmm. not a whole lot of dough. That's not a whole lot of dough. Nah. But it's like a couple <laughs> pieces, a couple slices. Perfect. So make your magic, Mrs. Right. Farmer. And we're gonna just make, and this will probably be a little bit more. We're only gonna make two, because me and you, yeah. Kelly refused yeah. to eat. And there's a, I mean, yes. this is, this is, this is a big, this is a big bunch. But I'm gonna just use two apples with this yeah. recipe. And I like my little apple cutter here. You leave the peelings on? No, I'm gonna cut the peelings off. Gotcha. And these things are wonderful for apples. Yes, they Maybe are. Maybe that, we're done with that. Thank you very much. And we also have a fun little tool that we found at an antique store that your mom used. These are general cutters. I mean, you can cut that. your butter into your flour. Uh, mom used it to cut cabbage mm -hmm. in her uh, end of the season relish or chow chow. She uses that. And you found me that at Antique Mall and I'm so excited. I'm, I'm gonna use that for all we this. We found the green. We found green in all kinds of antique stuff. We need to display that somehow, Mrs. Fun. Yes, we do. All right, so now it's just kind of my time. I'm be cutting the skins off these apples. So measurement wise, we have two apples cut. Two small apples. Yep. Pecans. Got I got a quarter cup of pecans. Quarter cup. Yep. Oatmeal. Quarter cup of oatmeal. All right. That's flour. Just thicken up quarter, quarter cup. Quarter cup? Mm hmm. Everything's quarter. Oh, Makes it easy. Yeah. Brown sugar, quarter cup. And you don't have to put raisins in it, but I but love it. But you love that. raisins. Oh, yeah. Now I need my fancy little chopper, like your mom had. I love this. Right. And this makes, this is so nice for cutting everything. I remember her doing that when she cooked on the show. I'm excited for both these recipes because it's good country down home stuff. And you know what? They'll be really cute sitting side by yes, side. They will. Now you're doing this in a muffin pan. I am. And I already made the dough, like you said, I had extra, and I'm gonna put those in and we're gonna fold them back over right and make our little buckets. If you want to start that butter, I have half a stick of butter. Right. And you're so good at I'm gonna let you season that up with what you think would be good. So what we're gonna do here is just put a little white sugar. All the cinnamon. You gotta have some mm -hmm. cinnamon. What do you say? Quarter of a teaspoon. Yeah. And some allspice. You know what else we need? Lemon. I'm, I'm, yes, a little bit of lemon. Gotta have some lemon. And I got a little bit of lemon juice here. How much do you think I have? About half of a lemon. I would say that's a teaspoon. I'm gonna put it all in because I like that lemony flavor. It gives you a little bit of a bite. Yeah. This really does smell like one of those home candles that smells like cinnamon. And I smell your apples over there. If you could smell our kitchen right now, you'd want a candle. Delish. You'd want a candle with that smell. All right, I'm gonna switch this with this, and I'm gonna go ahead and do my muffins with my pre-made, and they don't have to see how they're nothing fancy. They're do not. You perfect. know the muffin man. I know the muffin man, and I'm just gonna tuck these in and leave the edges out because we're gonna pull those up around our. Oh my! Are you ready for my? Yes. Beautiful, yummy. Smells delicious. Oh, oh, oh! And we probably won't need all this. We could have made a bunch more, mm -hmm. but we don't need a bunch more because we'll eat them all. That's exactly right. And again, what happens if you make too much? You pop it in the freezer. Next later. time you make your simple dough and you're good to go. Yes, now we're filling these up. See, there, and it's nothing fancy around the edges. So we're gonna pull it over into our little apple buckets. Oh. And again, a egg white wash on the top of that. Definitely to make it. I'm looking at my pot pies are getting close over there. So it's all about pies today. <laughs> 
What about the pies? You know what? We're almost going to use all this. All right. Now we're just going to fold these over. Nothing fancy. Just kind of bringing them up. So there's kind of a little hole. See how it's like a little beautiful flower? I'm going to put a little egg white on these two because that makes them brown up nice. Do you want to do the cinnamon first or after? I'd say after and that way it'll stick. What do you think? Stick on the top of it. Now I'm just taking a little bit of white sugar and cinnamon. Beautiful. Do we need oh. more sugar? You know what makes this really nice, Miss Farmer? Some ice cream. I say I hope you bought ice cream. I did. Okay, good. Beautiful. Beautiful. Now these have to go 40 minutes at 325. 325, yes. Gotcha. So it'll be perfect time for dessert. All right. You know, they say you are what you eat, so I don't eat chicken feet. I've seen you eat chicken feet. But I love me some of Grandma's pickled beets. I do too. But first, Mrs. Farmer. Do I get to dig in? Dig in. Can I dig that's in anywhere? That's going to be hot. Anywhere? Yeah, it's, it's all yours. I can just destroy. Oh, wow. I'm going to get you some of that. It's going to be hot now. You know how hot pies are. Wow. Mm. Mm. Can you dig it? I love that. Now, that's the thing about pot pie. I mean, you open that thing up. Oh, that's good. And you remember what temperature that was in. So many times as a kid, look at that. Look at this. Yeah. Just look. That's the way it's supposed to look. It's the way it's supposed to smell. And oh, it's delicious. The the crust is flaky. <laughs> a little bit hot. You're just, you're blowing steam. You're supposed to blow on it. Mmm. You see how flaky the crust is too. And that's the way you're supposed to burn. Uh -huh. your, that's mm. the way you're supposed to burn your tongue. Mm -hmm. You did good. Tell me that's not perfect. That's perfect. Wait a minute. That sounds like I'm ringing my own bell. Delish. Oh you, my goodness. I really didn't burn my tongue. That's delicious. Oh my. I think it's worth another burn. Now, it may be subtle, but the wild turkey. It's good. And it's nice and tender. I noticed mm -hmm. that, is it, from what you did, the meat's good. I could eat this every day. You know what? This is really, really good. Remember as a kid, you'd get them at the store and they're frozen? Yes. Well, this is better. Yes, it is better. <laughs> mm. Oh. Delish. A little hot. Mmm. <laughs> mmm. Mm. You need a drink. Mmm. <laughs> oh, well. mm -hmm. That might be my favorite pot pie. It's already. delicious. All right, so when you take a bite of this, those little peas are popping. Oh, it's good. You got the carrots. You, you know, you know that's a natural, but you really dig deep for that flavor, mm -hmm. and you th you taste the earthiness of the mushrooms. You taste just a little something different in the turkey. That is. This is really it's good. It's just outstanding. I can dig it. I can too. It's good. You ready for dessert? I am. Mm -hmm. That's just a work of art. Isn't that pretty? You did I'm afraid it. to touch it. You made it look beautiful with your mint and everything. Go we'll dig inside there. That's going to be the same. It's going to be super, super hot inside because, you know. Mm. Oh, I'm wow. I'm going to get in there and get some. Almost like an apple dumpling, but with all the gooey stuff with it. <laughs> oh, my goodness. See the ice cream, mm. if I start to burn my tongue, I can just slide the ice cream over on top of it. Oh, that is so good. That's dangerously good. Oh, wow. <laughs> Everything was in ramekins tonight. Mm -hmm. It's ramekin night. It is ramekin night. <sighs> made and, it fun, didn't it? It did. It made it fun. And believe it or not, our half hour is up. Yes, it is. But if you're out there scratching your head right now and thinking, where can I find those recipes? Mm -hmm. I don't know. Yeah. Where would you go, Mrs. Farmer? I go to timfarmerscountrykitchen.com. And we have a Facebook page. Yes. We have lots of folks over there talking. The really weird thing about it is everybody's kind to each other yes, over there. Yes, that is so nice. Come visit our Facebook page. Be our friend. Be kind. We visit with each other. We virtually break bread together. Yes, we do. Every Monday you can put your recipes on. Oh, Ms. Farmer, I just thought of this. It's really hard to get on there. How do you do it? You hit like. Wow. Come visit us on our Facebook page. Ms. Farmer? Yes. My belly's full. I've gained about five pounds. That's okay. So Just should I take a nap? I, I'm ready for a nice nap myself. You want me to take a nap so you can address it. That's right. right. I want you to go sit down. At this time, I'd like to say it's all about good times, good friends, and really good eats. Again. See you next week on Tim Farmer's Country Kitchen. Dig in, Ms. Farmer. I'm going to have some more. To order a cookbook, email timfarmerck at gmail.com.